So yes, this is the video of my BMW R1200 RT of 2011. Let me close this down. Maybe you can hear me better like this. Um, so welcome back everyone. Some of you may know me from my video of my ST1300, which was a touring bike, or maybe from my video of the segments, the touring segment, which is kind of gone. And I'm kind of sad for this. Some of you may know me from other videos where I do some maintenance or some building bikes, wherever you came from, welcome to my Chief Pep video, a new Chief Pep video. And I discussed earlier in another video that I have a love and hate relationship with BMW as a brand in motorcycles. Why? Because I think that BMW asks a lot of money for their bikes. Whilst the, uh, the technical liability or electronic liability or liability in the total aspect of it is not as wonderful as they might um, pretend. Because if you buy a bike for like 23,000 euros or dollars or whatever in that range or 25,000 you expect a bike which is nearly perfect, which you can drive always with a with a, a lot of confidence because you just know this bike won't let me down. And the fun fact is, or the sad fact actually, in practice, BMWs break down just like other bikes. I dare to say that Japanese bikes are more reliable than BMW bikes as of experience because I rode a GS 1200 before I had a K100 LT I had uh, a GS 1100 and now I have this BMW RT now this video is about this bike so I want to stay focused on this bike and I have to be honest that this bike which I bought so probably <laughs> I'm confident enough and uh, um, I went for it. This bike is one of the best bikes um, of BMW that I had. I had a lot of good bikes, great bikes, but I really am really, really happy with this bike. And it's strange for me as a critic caster of the BMW brand that I have this bike. And um, I gave it a lot of thought because people who watch, are watching this video probably think are also thinking or concerning to buy a bike, uh, uh, buy a, uh, an RT 1200, because this is obviously a second-hand bike, a little bit older bike. Um, so you're probably doesn't uh, are not watching this video because you want to buy a brand new RT. Then you have to watch another bike uh, with the, the, the water-cooled uh, types. Um, but if you are, uh, are, are, are thinking about buying a, a used RT, then let me start off with the fact, buy an RT with a build, uh, with, which is built in 2000, 2010 or later. Because a lot of you probably know that the bikes before those years, especially around 2006, had a lot, and I can stress enough, enough a lot of problems. Now, I don't know if I can put on the list here from the top of my head, otherwise I'll put some stuff uh, with text in the, in the video. But let's start off with uh, one of the big problems, which is the fuel tank lint, which is in, the, um, in this fuel tank. Not in this one, but in the 2006 models. They have a fuel measurement um, uh, fuel measurement system, which is uh, with, a, with a kind of a, a lint, as we call it in Dutch. Um, and it breaks down constantly. And you can replace it. It's not that hard to do. You could do it yourself. But what happens is that your fuel meter doesn't work anymore. Now, there are a lot of bypasses, but obviously, if you have a touring bike like this, uh, you just want a fuel meter which works. 
So that's the first problem. The other problem, the ABS. A lot of people know that the ABS of those years, around 2006, 2008, all have a lot of problems. Um, a lot of people think if you flush your uh, brake fluid enough every year or twice a year, then you won't have any problems. Maybe not totally true because it, uh, it's probably some the, the, the electrical motor which has a lot of problems with the ABS, which is the, causing the problem. But oh, la, the, my favorite corner, one of my favorite corners, guys, this big bike is great in cornering, is great to ride. Um, so yeah, the ABS has a lot of problems and flushing your ABS um, doesn't help. Yeah, it helps a bit, but doesn't fix the problem. The, um, the ASA system, or in other words, the, um, the electronic suspension, also a big problem with those bikes. A lot of people stay on their bike, put the, uh, put the riding height different if they go two up, don't sit on the bike because also that, uh, that electrical motor, just or that the servo motor can't handle that. Uh, your suspension will break, which is obviously very costly. Um, waved discs. Also, this bike had waved discs. Um, I fixed that. You can see it in the videos before this video. Uh, but the waved discs are also a big problem. And concerning those brakes, also the brake hoses have a lot of problem. The hoses get clogged. In other words, you find that one of your front discs, for instance, doesn't break anymore because it's completely clogged with rubber. So you should replace your braking lines with um, uh, steel braking lines. So this is just a small list of all the problems this bike has. And this is why I have this love and re hate relationship with BMW, because if you buy a bike like this, you expect a bike which you can ride like thousands of miles without any problems and this bike doesn't come without problems now the years after 2010 and later um, uh, obviously are st uh, much better a lot of recalls have been done um, so yeah um, the bike got better because there was a lot of problems and people kept complaining and BMW saw this and repaired it and everything and replaced parts but still I don't want a, I, I just want a hassle-free bike. As my daily drive, I, I, I really love wrenching, but as a daily driver, I really like um, to have my bike working like it's supposed to. So now let, let's talk about the experience on this bike. Now, as I told in my uh, ST1300 uh, video, I have this strange uh, love relationship with touring bikes even though I'm a really sporty driver rider um, I just love the touring bikes why because I just have the feeling and this bike gives me that that I'm kind of the king of the road and still have a sports feel I can ride this bike sporty I also like the Goldwing but this just gives me a little bit more sporty feeling I don't feel that old on this bike, even though eh, a lot of people say you just buy this bike if you're an old 50 plus fat man and uh, you, then you buy a touring bike like this. Well, I'm not, I don't consider myself as old fat. Uh, I think I'm still young, uh, even though I'm 46. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it just gives me such a good feeling because I really have the feeling I'm in control, it's really uh, um, comfortable, of course, and it's got a lot that I love. Let me sum up a few things that I really love about this bike. First of all, this whole dashboard that you can see here, I think it looks great, very luxurious. Uh, even the idea that there could be speakers in there, maybe I'll ever do that, I don't think so, because I have my speakers in my helmet. but. Um, yeah, the luxury, uh, the cornering, the riding in total, very good. Maybe I'm gonna do the suspension. I'll go to my friends at HK Suspension to have a checkup 
on the suspension because this bike really had a lot of miles on it, 148,000 as you can see uh, kilometers, so that's quite a lot. I have to concentrate on these bends, corners. Let me take this corner, I don't have my riding gear on because it's nice and sunny, just a short trip. Um, now, one thing about the screen um, is that I, yeah, I see the, the, the edge of the screen. That's something that I exactly have on my eyes. So my seat is in the lowest position and still I look exactly against those, that edge. I have, so my vision is kind of blocked by that edge, uh, even though the screen is in its highest, uh, in its highest stand. So yeah, that's something uh, I don't really like. Um, what I really like, which was kind of a must for my bike, is the cruise control. So I've got the cruise control here, which works great. I just have to flip it like this and it's on cruise. On my previous bike, the Moto Guzzi, I, uh, that was the first time uh, that I um, uh, uh, got in contact with the, the cruise control on a motorbike and never rode cruise control on a motorbike before. But what, since I have it, I don't want to miss out. So I always, on all my next bikes, it has to have cruise control, same as in a car. I can't ride it anymore without cruise control because it's so relaxing. Um, other thing that I really like is um, that uh, it's got <laughs> heated grips and a heated seat. Now, I, when I was looking for a bike like this, I sat on a bike without the heated seat and with the heated seat. And I have the feeling that the heated seat is a little bit maybe like 10 or one centimeter higher than a normal seat, so maybe this has to do with the edge that I'm looking at. So I, I have the feeling that the heated seats are a little bit higher than the normal seats. But I really like the heated seats. It's got heated seat front and rear. And I think if I have a touring bike like this, it has to be complete. So this bike is absolutely complete. Also, I have the top case on the back. So I have uh, all the luggage, uh, uh, and which is nice because when I have my kids on the back, for instance, or my wife, um, it's nice that they have this backrest. Now, what's really nice on this bike is that everything, uh, you don't have to lock your bike uh, or, or open it with a key. You just press this button and then you open up. And what's really nice is that is they have this system here which rolls in and out, um, which is so luxurious and typically I think these are the influences of a uh, BMW car department because who thinks of this? In all my other bikes with panniers, I had these things dangling here, uh, breaking down, but this is something that really is nice and also works great. Same goes for the side. You just press it in, pull this lever and it opens again with this nice cord here. Of course, these things to keep your luggage in. It's so luxurious that it works like that. And then like this, closes up. Taking off those panniers is also really easy. You just insert the key, release, this flips up, and you just take it off like that. How easy is that? With all my other bikes, it was quite of a hassle, especially with the ST1300. You don't even want to take them off because it, it just doesn't look nice. Now let me see if I have, yeah, like this. And now it's locked. You can't take them off. Really nice. And I know that the top cases are pretty expensive. So I made a good deal for a complete bike, including all the three luggage, uh, the panniers. Um, so yeah, th this gives me the total feeling of this bike, which I really like. Now, how you, do you um, recognize that this is a two, 2011? It's because I have the, uh, the switch control here on the left side, which and the BMWs before this model year had the uh, classic flippers left and right. BMW has a different system of uh, blinker lights, of um, uh, signal lights. 
left and right, but this has just the normal, like every motorbike has. And another thing that you, how you can recognize is these brake, these brake, <laughs> how do you call these? These brake, uh, these brake parts here on the, and fuel, uh, uh, and hydraulic fuel, hydraulic clutch and brake parts here on the top. Normally it was integrated in the uh, levers. Um, so these are uh, typical things that you can recognize. Ah, this is that model with, which has all the, uh, the upgrades which you need uh, to don't have any much problems. Now, one thing that is strange on this bike, and which I yeah, kind of dislike, is when I brake like, oh, okay, now <laughs> I've got a green light. But when I brake at traffic lights, the bike doesn't sink in the front suspension. So when I'm going to brake now, oh, I don't have to brake, but when I brake now, it doesn't really go into its suspension on the front. And this is because of the T-Lever system which BMW has it's a proven system which is great and it works and everything but I just like my bike to go uh, into its suspension when I brake even at yeah really practical uh, moments like when I pull my uh, bike out of the garage I don't just want to use that um, the traffic of the suspension to pull my bike out but it doesn't go into its suspension when you brake or push it and it just gives a strange strange feeling i don't know what it is but it just gives a strange feeling i really have to get used to that um but i'm not used to it yet kind of i don't know why it's, it's kind of strange for the rest yeah the bike rides great it, it just gives you that luxurious feeling you really have the feeling that you, yeah, that that that, that king of the road. Um, I really can imagine that that police departments choose this kind of bike because it just gives you a total control. The engine power is a little bit less than I had. the The experience that I have with the the power of the engine is different compared to the GS. At the GS, you, I have the feeling I have more button power. Um, it, it's not uh, not smoother, but um, the power that I that I want, that I need in a bike, yeah, it's kind of disappointing at this bike. Um, I expected more. I remember that the guy who bought my Moto Guzzi uh, V85, he had a GS, 2013. Uh, so when he test drive, uh, dr uh, he, he did a test ride on my bike on the uh, on the Guzzi. I jumped on his GS, and instantly then I felt, yeah, I really like this engine. I really like this boxer engine. It has a lot of power compared to the V85, especially of course because the V85 is 850 cc. But I expected, I remembered that feeling, and when I drove test rode all these RTs. I had like, hey, this is not as much power as I have had on the GS. So it's not disappointing, but I ex expected more. I, I reckon that the, the newer bikes, the, which came after this, uh, have a, lot of, uh, a little bit more horsepower, different, uh, uh, different torque and everything. So yeah, but still, if we talk about the engine, it's really smooth. It's really smooth. Um, maybe not not too smooth, but uh, I I would like to feel more of the V or the, the two cylinder. Um, yeah, the, the the character of a two cylinder. I I, I really like the two cylinders. I I drove the Aprilia uh, with a V two, uh, and of course the Moto Guzzi and everything. And and those bikes or the Buell, um, those bikes really. You feel that two-cylinder cylinder character, and I kind of miss the two-cylinder cylinder character of this boxer engine. Um, it, it, 
there needs to happen something. Something needs to happen uh, between there and the, the, in the lower in the in the RPMs or whatever. And um, I don't want to say it's too smooth, but if I want the lux, uh, if I, if I go for the luxury like this, maybe I would even like a K series, series like a a four or six cylinder. Um, yeah, I, you don't buy this bike because of the boxer character um no no it's not not special enough if you ask me the, the sound of the engine though is really nice now this this engine is a 2011 engine and it has the the special flap in the exhaust and this opens at certain rpms it opens up and gives you a different hole a different scream a different sound of the exhaust I know that at a GS this is really recognizable and you really hear it and for me uh, uh, on a touring bike like this you don't need to hear the engine especially or something so uh, it's a nice gimmick um, and it gives a, a nice roar but yeah um, it's a nice extra but not really necessary uh, concerning the uh, the mirrors I can imagine that you Want to get used to those mirrors? I had these kind of mirrors on my SC1300, so I'm kind of used to looking down uh, to see what's happening behind me. But um, I see my hands in it, I see my uh, panniers in it. Um, so yeah, um, I can imagine some people put some extra mirrors on the bike. I would never do that, but I can imagine that you want a better view on the rear, um, uh, to, to the rear. Now this bike came with a uh, a, uh, a navigation BMW navigation system in the in the top. Uh, as you can see in my previous video, uh, I'm on an SP Connect. I've turned around my cam uh, my phone now because I'm also obviously uh, uh, filming with my uh, with my phone. But uh, it's really nice to have it up there. You can imagine that uh, I have my uh, navigation system there, my phone connected to my helmet. So also that's something that the luxury of the bike makes it complete. The dashboard is also very complete. I have a lot of information on there. Um, uh, I can see how, how many uh, miles I, have to, uh, I can go with this uh, fuel tank. I can see uh, my average speed. Um, uh, how much it consumes, um, my tire pressure front and rear, uh, the uh, degrees of Celsius outside. Uh, yeah, uh, very complete for the year 2011. Now, another thing is, which is really nice, I, uh, if you watched my previous videos, I worked on this bike. Um, I've, uh, I've this, uh, did some, 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 some routine maintenance. Okay, I don't know if you can called uh, doing the uh, replacing the front disc routine maintenance but something that i found out is that the bike is really nice to wrench on i really was yeah uh, my, my 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 thoughts were oh no bmw it's strange just like ducati everything works different than japanese bikes which i'm used to wrench on but nothing compared to that it's it's really nice that Everything that you take off, like the side panels, the fairing, is so easy to do. Everything which works with Torx, I don't really like that. But 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 when I uh, started wrenching with all the Torx screws, I thought, yeah, why not? It, it really works nice. When you ride a bike and you already wrenched on it, um, you have the feeling. You, you you make a connection with the bike, and that's something I really like. And because I know that it's really nice to wrench on, gives me an extra nice feeling with the bike when I ride it. So, my verdict of this bike. Um, I'm really happy with the bike. I have to be honest that uh, it, I constantly, when I <laughs> step on the bike, I really have this great feeling. I definitely had this the same with the Pan European, the SC1300, which I did like two or three years ago. Um, and that V4 engine gave me a little bit more of a, yeah, special feeling about the engine, char character-wise. Uh, this bike uh, has the boxer engine, also two-cylinder, um, really is nice, but doesn't have that special feeling that I have with the Moto Guzzi, or for instance, with the 
uh, ST1300. But still, when you ride this bike, and also since I have wrenched on this bike, and I always recommend all my viewers and everybody to wrench on your bike. When you buy a secondhand bike, you want to get to know the bike. Since I wrenched on this bike, I felt how it was to work on the bike, how nice that is, because with all the torque screws and everything that fits and is logical, um, gives you kind of the same feeling when you ride it, everything works, everything is supposed to be there, everything is thought of, like I showed you with the trunks and the panniers, the, the system, but also the buttons, the cruise to control, every push button that is on this bike, um, feels great, feels good, feels doesn't feel uh, cheap or anything. So you have the luxurious feeling. Yes, the bike is expensive when you buy it new, but the fun thing is when you buy it secondhand, like I did, for a great price, you have all the luxury feeling. Um, as the same baby, uh, comparable, I always would love to buy a se uh, old 7 Series. A BMW uh, a car, uh, like a 7 Series out of 95 or 96 or something. That feels, probably also feels like really luxurious, a little bit outdated, but still everything works. I have the same with this. Uh, this also gives me that luxurious feeling, even though it's a 2011 bike. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the bike. It rides great, it feels great, everything works. You feel the king of the road. It's sporty, it looks good, I'm really happy. And if you, have, uh, if you are considering to buying a R1200 RT secondhand, buy a 2011 or 2010 or up, so you don't have all the hassle with the ABS, with the tank, and have all the problems that I discussed on the bike.